we're going to make some cultured buttermilk. Not the buttermilk you see on some of the videos that's made with a combination of lemon juice and cream. This is cultured by using a selection of bacteria to produce the finished result. And therefore you don't need cream which can be quite expensive, you can just use ordinary milk. So let's have a look at the sort of things we'll need in order to produce the buttermilk. You'll need a, a measuring jug and this uh, measures up to 2 litres. We want some wide neck flasks. Uh, there's one there, a different one there. This is probably the better one, but I've got an additional one just in case there's more liquid than is required or an overflow from this flask. So there's the flasks. You will need a digital thermometer and on my website I'll give you some links how to pick up one of these quite reasonably. It measures in degrees centigrade or Celsius and you can press a button, it changes to degrees Fahrenheit. So you will need one of those to check the temperature of the milk. Uh, you will need a whisk to whisk the buttermilk with the milk. You will need the buttermilk. Now this is by a company called Dale Farm in the UK. Uh, in the USA there are various manufacturers. This is a cultured buttermilk. It's not real buttermilk in as much as Real buttermilk is made as a byproduct from making butter. When cream is churned, you get the butter fat plus you get the buttermilk. But this is cultured buttermilk. So you'll need some cultured buttermilk. Then you need the milk. Uh, this one in the UK has got a blue top, tells me it's full fat, which is 4%. You can use semi skimmed, which is 2%, or you can use fully skimmed, which is 0% fat. Uh, my favourite tends to be the Channel Islands milk, which is about 5% fat. It gives a nice creamy consistency. But ordinary milk is fine, even if it's skimmed, you still get a good consistency. You can also use goat's milk as well, in order to make cultured buttermilk. It gives you a different taste. But again, quite a nice product. The first part of the process in making cultured buttermilk is to tip the milk into a saucepan and to turn the heat on because we need to heat the milk to about 82 degrees Celsius that's roughly about 180 degrees Fahrenheit this is to kill any external pathogens and bacteria that we don't want in the finished result so let's just turn that on and what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the heat down so it's just slightly heating but keep an eye on it, we don't want it too far above 82 or 180 because that will develop almost like a boiled flavour. So just to check on the temperature at the moment, uh, it's showing me 15 degrees Celsius, or about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to keep an eye on that, and as soon as it hits 80 degrees Celsius, or about 180 degrees Fahrenheit, then we'll do the next stage in the process. So the temperature on there now is showing me 83 degrees Celsius, come to 84, 85. Now that's high enough temperature, so I'm going to turn off the heat. So I pour the heated milk into my jug, and you want to check it now. It's still looking at about 77 degrees C. Now the temperature I wanted to get to before I add the cultured buttermilk is 42 degrees Celsius, anywhere between 37 and 42 degrees Celsius. So it's going to take me a little bit of while to actually cool down before I guess the temperature before I can add cultured buttermilk. So I've covered that now with cling film or cling wrap. I don't want anything to get in there while it's cooling down. So we'll just leave that now for perhaps an hour, hour and a half. But I would come back every sort of half hour to check the temperature because we are looking at between, again working in Celsius, between 37 which is body temperature and 42 degrees Celsius. The nearer to 42 degrees Celsius the better. Okay, so it's been about an hour, hour and a half, so let's just check the temperature. As 
actually going to need on the throw. Miron, 42.9, 43 degrees Celsius. So we're almost there. We need to get around over 42. So the next stage in the process, while I'm waiting for that to cool down to 42, I'm going to boil a kettle uh, because I need to disinfect and get the temperature of my flasks nice and warm. So the reason I want to pour boil water in the flask, so be careful when you do this obviously for health and safety reasons, is firstly to preheat the flask to get it nice and warm because we want to keep it at a, a constant warm temperature as we leave the product throughout the night. It also disinfects the inside of the flask, killing any undesirable fungi, any possible pathogens and other bacteria which we don't really want in the finished product. So there's no need to leave it for too long, just a couple of minutes and then we'll add the solution. What I also like to do just to be on the safe side is to dip your whisk into the flask to make sure that's disinfected as well in readiness for the mixing. So I can put that to one side. It'd probably be a good idea as well, what I always do is to tip boiling water on, onto the stoppers as well that go onto the flasks. So in order to make the buttermilk I'm going to uh, give my buttermilk a bit of a shake up. We open it. Now there's quite a lot in here already but I don't need to add all that. I'll just do a, a final check of the temperature, see where we are. Around 40, 40.6, 40, 40 degrees Celsius. Almost perfect. Okay, I like to get 42, but just under 42, as I said earlier, between 37 and 42 is great. So let's just turn that off. Now, I'll show you the amount that you need to add. We're just going to add just a small amount. You can see how much I've taken over there. And that will be plenty. So all we need to do then is just whisk that in. That's well whisked through, and now we just tip that into the flasks. So I've added to both flasks. Uh, this one in particular I filled up, and as you can see, I'll just give it a little shake. It is quite liquidy. Now, once I put the lid on that and leave that overnight, you will see a remarkable change. Now the rest I put into the spare thermos flask which I've already sealed. So that will go to one side again and we'll leave that overnight. So I just want to seal that. My lid and just leave that then overnight. Make sure it's totally sealed up. So let's have a look at the results. This has been left overnight. I call the magic moment. This is where the culture, the bacteria have done their work, they've worked on the milk and they turned it into buttermilk.